Oh man. Oh, why, hello there. Unlucky. <laughs> yeah, so I muted myself again because OBS crashed, but as I was just saying, we're going to introduce our next players. We did just see IRK30 Ash there, so this is going to be Mind Player's chance to get a little bit of pride, and it's going to be in another TVZ, so. I love it when I say things that are so blindingly brilliant that they cannot be conceived by human ears and thus it just appears as if we're moving our mouths without actually talking that is pretty good i do it a lot you know it's, it's one of my special it's, powers it, it, well, as all good casters should have of course okay but i mean we're gonna have another zvz irk whistler he's pretty good he's two for one at the moment and mind flare one for two so one of the players has actually got a win on his team so not to throw shade obviously but um should Dark be, player should be cool to see if mind player can actually pull this <laughs> off and their arena is not going to be on judgment day wait is this actually judgment day though no this is no. going to be new moonglaive i completely forgot to change the thing here we go guys you can see my background thing uh that doesn't really work and now i can't find new moonglaive so let's generate that again let's go back there we go it's like nothing bad ever happened <laughs> and it's gonna be perfectly smooth except you're again <laughs> he totally checked it too guys i did oh man this is like the ultimate but don't here. bully him though no bully please <laughs> i'm most likely to be bullied on foreign brudor apparently and it's because I, I just agree with everyone That's why we had to come to prison to bully you in person you got thrown in prison for bullying well no, this is our clever way of infiltrating <laughs> they'll never guess that it was all our plans all along you already got sale Last one. <laughs> yeah, every every other foreign brute well, English brute war caster has disappeared. I mean, first Whiplash went, then Sale disappeared, and if I don't come back, guys, you know who to blame. <laughs> but then the trouble is, I said that in uh, Discord as a joke, and then Cantorix said, "Don't worry, I'll just use your username, and no one ever know you've gone anywhere." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> That's kind of messed up." But you know what? It's gonna be a TBZ. It's gonna be on Neo Moonglave three player map. Uh, gas at all the bases so no mineral in these anymore and it should be kind of cool to see how this goes so let's get into the game and let's get started well here we have in the 12 o'clock position the blue zerg mind flare for team ash and his op and his opponent uh, in the, uh, what is that, Nine, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, I'm calling it 8 in the 8 o'clock position, in the teal and clearly inferior Zerg color, uh, is Whistler, who is, double quotes, actually very good, as said by Cadenzi about 10 minutes ago. It was like 2 minutes ago. Yeah, she also threw some shade at Mind Flayer, which... <laughs> You know what? It, it can't be. Yeah, that part where he, where where she said that he was totally awful and should never be allowed to play. Like I don't know why she would say such a mean and terrible thing, but like, wow. The truth has to be heard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, jokes aside, I am excited to see what it looks like when uh, two players that are so obviously skilled at inflating their APM in the beginning face off against each other. What a sick drone trick. Hmm. Oh, oh is he pretty... doing the 10 overhead? He did. I hope he's doing the 10 overhead. That's an overlord! Is he going to hatch or pool there? The hatch. Ah, uh, I think it's going to be a pool. So what's the what's the benefit of doing 10 overhatch? He's already not well, done it, but... Yeah, he can't now because... You get one extra larva. That drone was dancing like crazy. He was on speed. But yeah, there we go. It's going to be a spawning pool here and back here in Whistler's base. He's going to go for an 11 pool as well. So I'm not really sure that drone trick really achieved too much. Yeah, actually, it doesn't really do anything in this situation. Close. <laughs> Have your gas later for some reason. It also looks cooler. I mean, building building a building and cancelling it, that's obviously pro. And you have to do it at that specific timing too. Otherwise, it's just like ults are totally useless. Both of them look like they're going to be going for a fast expansion here behind the pools, so we could actually see a longer CVZ here. I mean, essentially mirrored build, except, you know, light and efficiency on the gas tank. 
and you can see he's already up to 40 gas before Mind Flayer is able to start mining his, so that's a pretty big advantage in PvZ. He's going to get the full 100 probably before Mind Flayer even has anything. Here's when Mind Flayer builds like a Hydralis Den or an Evo Chamber <laughs> or something and then just Does screws Doug it. Does Whistler go for <coughs> Lair or Sweet first? First. Yeah. So he's looking to try and get some mm -hmm. Zerlin Micro going. Now, have either of them actually scouted each other yet? I don't think they... Oh, yeah, they have. I'm completely blind. Teal and blue. I was going to say, overlords exist. Yeah, teal teal and blue is not good colours to the try and... The teal overlord did go towards the blue base, so it should be in there. Yeah, hidden over the leg. Gonna see exactly what his opponent's going to be doing. And we're going to have some lings on the attack across the map, but I don't think they're going to be able to do too much. No, and he's not even going to have Zerlin speed by the time Teal does have Zerlin speed, so these Zerlins might just die pretty much for free. It's actually unreal how much better speedlings are than uh, than regularlings. It's just it's so not even close, and it's not like it makes them deal more damage. It's just so much faster. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, and then you add adrenaline into that as well. And well lings. Also, you can't run from them either. That's the other yeah. big thing if you're like, chasing them across. Okay. Well, like, if you just fight heads up, then yeah, the speed doesn't matter, man. Yeah. <laughs> so everything I said just doesn't matter right there, but, you know, in theory, that would have been uh, important. Well, you only just got the speed. Now, the lair is only just behind for Mind Flayer. He did go for, well, Mind Flayer, or Whistler obviously went for the speed first, so that did give the quicker lair for Mind Flayer there, just about, I think. Yeah, I think you are correct there. Does he even have Zergon speed on the way, though? He didn't before, but will he have now? He's built a lot of links, but no he doesn't. He's going straight into Spire. He needs Zerglings speed. What does he even do? I mean, Muteless. Zerglings can't hit air, so... Why do you Is need that, uh, speed? That's faster lair for Whistler, right? Yeah, the uh, lair he was He only has faster. one drone on gas, though, so it looks like he's going to pure Zergling. Yeah, I mean, Mind Player's done a pretty good job adding on a lot of Zerglings here, and he could be going for this bust, but he needs to be careful. He still does not have link speed. Very tense moment. Is he gonna move in? Is he not? Uh, I actually think the numbers of Zerglings are pretty even right now. Like, despite him, like you said, skipping a little bit on uh, on gas to get minerals out of it. Uh, I don't know. Also, like, anytime you just have oh. Zerglin speed though, and his opponent doesn't, so this is pretty. Uh, this is pretty bad for Mind Flare. Oh my God, he actually is gonna lose everything because he has no Zerglin speed. Yeah. So. Pretty much just gonna get run over there. Yeah, and he doesn't have. He, I mean, he's abandoning his natural for now. He has no Zerglings back home. He has no Sunken either. When is Muta's out though? Like these things are not gonna. Spire's not. Yeah, there finish. we go. Oh my god. Four oh my god. Oh, this is gonna be so terrible for Mind Flayer. It looks like. Twenty-four. Looks yeah. like Whistler is gonna take IRK four-zero in this say, series. If, if only there was a letter that described accurately this situation. I think that letter is G. G G. I mean, okay. he's still trying to hold on, but why give up? I he's mean, you know, if there's one force in the universe that can pull a player back for the brink of destruction, uh, it is the drone drill. Uh, also, perhaps some mutalisks, but uh, ugh. ah, ooh. Drones are dying so quickly, and G G. There it is. As Rapid said before, the lair is going to go down as well. It looks like uh, one of them stayed in a little bit longer. But, I mean, a pretty cool game. Unfortunately, Mind Flayer skipping out on Zergling speed. And that really does end up hurting him really badly. Kind of more than I thought it would, actually. Yeah, it is the letter F to pick up. That is the correct letter. Yeah, also, nobody knows what that letter is that you wrote, Rota. So, leave that one out there. It's, it's a thing. It, the O of the line thread. It is, yeah. It's, it's the way that you d distinguish a zero from an O, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and Koga, this is obviously me, you know who I am, and this is Rapid, and that is Cadenti. So all three of us are in prison right now, with both, well, three of us are We're here to prison. bust him out. We baked, I'm in here as well. We baked a kitchen knife into his birthday cake, and somehow that's going to allow us to cut through the steel bars, which are on, just on the other side of that door. It's pretty incredible that they didn't realize it wasn't my birthday as well. I mean, <laughs> they just, we totally fooled them. <laughs> they had no idea. They just, they're like, oh my god, it's, it's Kix's birthday. Let's let him have the cake. 
didn't check it. It's just, uh, it's kind of funny when that happens. Like, it's happened a few times. It's how I get out to work every single day. Like, someone always brings me a birthday cake in the beginning of every morning with a knife in. And, and like, they still haven't cut. They're just like, wow, I, I thought it was his birthday. Oh, maybe we were trying. Maybe it's his birthday today, then. Yeah, they can never be too sure. Uh, you know, I definitely, I did that with Wendy's when I was a kid. They would give you, like, a free mini Frosty if it was your birthday. And I just went in literally, like, oh, like two weeks in a row. Because there was a Wendy's right down by my house. And I was like, hey, uh, it's my birthday today. And I would just, like, show them, like, some made-up piece of paper that said it was my birthday. Because I was too young to have a driver's license, right? So I had no official ID. How are they going to check it's my birthday, right? I didn't have a passport or anything. That is pro-gamer tactic. I, I literally just, like, showed them. And they're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Tell the 10-year-old no? It's like, I'm going to yeah. break in the game right here. <laughs> You're an evil troll. Like they, they made you feel so. I got those frosties though. Day. So like, really, who is the true winner here? Let's just very quickly recap that series. Uh, that was a pretty cool one, but it was a pretty quick one. And we're going to move on to our next one shortly after. So, if we'd have a look here, you can see that IRK beat their opponents four zero. So, pretty good job by them. Cubic beating out game favorite, taking out Tear. Kamizerg taking out Jojo. And um, Whistler taking out Mind Flayer, so I mean, pretty good, pretty well played by them. Unfortunately, Ash didn't have the best of chances there, and I mean, there's not really too much else to add. But that will, I believe, propel IRK to the top of the table. So when we get back after a short break, uh, we will show the table again because we are going to be moving into arguably the main event of today. It's going to be Soul versus White. And there are some incredible games coming there. So we'll be back in about five minutes or so. So don't go anywhere. Tell your friends and we'll be back very soon.
fine. Okay guys, welcome back. You are watching the Shin Han Tank Pro League. Thank you for the few donations that came in throughout the break. Uh, sorry, the notifications didn't work. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. I think you heard it though, uh, so yeah, that does mean a lot. We already had pizza, but I can pay Rapid back the money he gave me now, so that's pretty good. Oh boy, more Monopoly money. Monopoly <laughs> money. Yeah, Rapid doesn't like the UK currency, but you it's know what? It's not that I don't like it, I just don't know what anything is. Like, the bills are helpful enough to say the number on it, but like, when I get all these, like, coins, it's like, the size of the coin has no bearing to its value. Like, the two pence ones are, like, like way bigger, bigger than the, the ones that are worth more. It does say two pence. It does. It does, yeah. They what am I not supposed to call it that? Well, you know that it's two value and two pence. Well, yeah, yeah, but but like, you know, what am I gonna do? Read each coin in my pocket? <laughs> you only need to read it once, and then you know what it is, right? Oh, whoa, no, 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 my <laughs> kind sir, you assume a little too much there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm American. I don't read things. Like they, they should be. It's the right size. color coded and size coded. Neither one of those require reading. I look at my money. Is it green? It's like yes. <laughs> and then you look at the numbers. Like okay. You do have 10 coins though, right? We don't like to talk about those. Just everything is a dollar, like, right? that's it. We just have this, like, real hatred towards copper and the metals and pennies, so we keep torturing them into circle shapes, even though nobody uses them. Like, what's, what's the point? Yeah, because I guess everything in America, rather than being like, you don't really get 99 cents things, do you? Everything is just like a dollar. Well, well the reason it is 99 cents is so that the tax bumps it up yeah. over a dollar. And because people for some reason have a psychological barrier that makes them think that 99 cents is less than a dollar by more than a cent. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I've had a discussion about this with someone. But either way, uh, we're going to be moving on to our next series and it's going to be probably one of the most exciting we've had in the entire SCPL. It's the final series of today. Final series of round one as well if you don't count uh, the playoffs. And it is going to be between Soul and White. And we'll just switch to the overlay and we can get going pretty quickly. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is, I, I don't want to say the main event as a you know, detriment to the previous series, because uh, I think we all uh, have burned into our brains the greatness uh, that was that 4-0. Uh, but moving on to, uh, to this series, of course, two uh, very, very strong Korean clans, uh, White Clan and Seoul, and uh, of course, Kix is uh, incredibly biased. As a member of Clan White. And a member of Clan Soul. Oh yeah, that's right. So, uh, I'm in an awkward position. Yeah. Because <laughs> they both wanted me to cast for them, and so far I've not really casted Yeah, anything. I was just saying, how's that working so out? Who's, who's kicks picked? Yeah. You, you need to have a segment, by the way, where you make a short video about your predictions for ASL, where you call it Kicks Picks. That, you know what, that'd actually be pretty cool. But then again, I'd get all of them wrong, because my liquid bets were... <laughs> Right, but it's more about having the show with a sick name. Yeah. Oh man. But either way, you know what? Both of these have done very, very well throughout the entire season so far. Like they're both four for one at the moment, along with IRP, who are now five for one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, White Clan have had really good Terran players. They've been nine for one for Terran. Zerg two for one. They've not been using as many Zergs. And I mean, Soul hasn't even got a Protoss player, I don't think. So. They've been relying entirely on the Terrans and Zergs, and I think we're going to see that again in this series, as when we move on to the maps we're going to be looking at. We're going to start with Gladiator, move on to Polaris Rhapsody, go to Grand Line, move to Neo Moonglave, and then to Judgment Day, and I will let Cadenzi and Rapid introduce the players. No one's ever heard of them before, but we have Best, uh, the Protoss player from Pacific. Yeah, and another... Uh... What do we want to call this guy's uh, underdog of the foreign community? Uh, Scan, uh, and then of course Famas E, which yeah, is he's going up against Shane E. Yeah, so you can really see the similarity there. Uh, and then uh, a guy who obviously met Gecko. No, no, no. Gecko versus Dandy, uh, which is also going to be pretty sick. Dandy is also somewhat good at Starcraft. I've heard. Yeah, That's going to be a PVT as well. And of course, Mind and Miso. That's my personal favorite. Not quite a rematch of ASL, but still super, super good players. ZVT though. Yeah, I was just the talking. Best 
the Starship that. Troopers ma matchup. Yeah, that is that should actually be by far the best cam. Um, I, I mean, I'm always open-minded to other series being super good. Actually, the first game should be pretty cool too to see uh, Scan go up against Best. Mm -hmm. For sure. But yeah, games one and four are at least my uh, gonna be my favorites. Also, I think watching Mind play me so on Neil Moonglaive could be cool because I don't think I've ever seen them play on that map before. I could probably say that about most games and Kicks tournaments. But uh, yep, I am very eclectic in my map choices. Now, just have a quick look at the ranking table so far. So as you can see, IRK now topping Group B. They're looking to, I think they are guaranteed now to get out of uh, Group B into the playoffs. So that means either one of Soul or White are not going to be making it to the Round 1 playoffs. And they're going to have to wait until Round 2 to play uh, again in the SCPL. But Soul and White very close to each other at the moment. Just two games, two wins difference mm -hmm. in uh, their two standings. So kind of insane there obviously the playoffs will probably be announced and everything after or probably tomorrow i guess is probably going to be when i'll do that uh but moving on to the first game here just because uh i mean it's getting quite late in the uk and i know these two have been up since 4 a.m so they're Ugh. they're troopers right now uh but we're gonna have best versus scan now scan has played four times in the scpl he's won all four games although apparently he doesn't have a win ratio which I don't understand how my overlay is broken. That Four was and zero is indeed zero. Well, it's because you can't divide by zero. Yeah. <laughs> no, because it I should have 100%. But either way, it's not showing. But who cares? Best is making his debut game for White. One of the strongest players on White, the X, SK Telecom. Mm -hmm. T1 Protoss. That is the real best, guys, if you're wondering. And he is going to be playing a really good PvT here, I can imagine. Now, we could see the Total Recall here. This was played after that came out. So, this is going to be pretty cool. And they are going to be playing uh, on Gladiator. Nice standard map to start things out. I think basically everybody in Korea has played a lot on this map. Just because it's uh, been in last season and this season of ASL. So, uh, not going to struggle like perhaps best or uh, uh, Miso and uh, uh, Mind might on Neo Moonglade a little bit later. It should be pretty cool. I'm fairly certain though, at least because of Pro League, Miso may have played, and I know Mind definitely played on Moonglade, so it's not going to be their first rodeo. But let's head on into the game. I think I've set up all the overlay. There's probably something I've completely missed. Oh, it looks like it's all I good. Think so. We're ready. Let's get going and let's get started with our first game of the series. I have no idea why I just clicked that. All good. All right. Do the honors kicks. Okay, so starting off in the whoops, starting off in the bottom left position is probably one of my favorite Protoss players ever. From SK Telecom T1, playing for white these days, it's going to be best, the Peach Protoss. Right, by far uh, the uh, number two most jacked Protoss player of all time, uh, by the way. Uh, his opponent is the, uh, the Scourge of the uh, foreign Protoss, or of the foreign Brood War uh, community. Not that he spawns in pairs of twos and blows up uh, Protoss air units, uh, but because he is just super good and he's, of course, undefeated in STPL. Uh, scan. Now, I mean, as you were saying before, you said that Best is the second most jacked. Who's the first one? It's Nada. <laughs> Nada what? doesn't play Protoss, he's Terran. Oh, I, did I say Protoss? Yeah, I just you meant said Korean Protoss. player. Oh, okay. Um. Wait, wasn't there... Ah, uh, who's the other... Mm, okay, I can't remember any others right now. Mm. And honestly, I mean, as soon as you say the word best and start thinking... Can like, I reach or something? Reach was pretty jacked. He wasn't actually more... He was more just, just plain handsome. Yeah, he had the chin. Like, he was yeah. the most manly Protoss he, ever. He was incredibly manly. That's why you call his zealots manlots. You do. And I mean, he just went full in with zealots a lot. And he killed a lot of people. So... Not too bad, but I mean, Scan probably. Wow, he's actually not going for a one racks FE here, so playing a little bit less standard for Gladiator, maybe feeling a little bit of the pressure. TVP isn't Scan's best matchup, so. And this is going to be a very tough opponent given Best was always a PVT specialist. 
Mm -hmm. And Scan has also been practicing a lot of two. So probably we're feeling a little better out of sorts than the one v one department right now. Yeah, I was gonna say the biggest advantage for Scan is that Shiny is on his team this time, so he can't uh can't uh, play against him. But he has to play against Bess. Really a big upgrade better. there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, best. This, is, this guy's pretty good. Uh, he has won several StarCraft games before, um, and is uh, you know back to do it again. This is his first STPL game, right? Yep, this is his first ever. White decided when they signed up. They knew it was a foreign league. Best and Mind and the likes were obviously practicing for ASL a lot. And also, it's a little bit late for them in Korea when this starts. I believe the game time is at midnight, so they a they didn't want to make them play at that time because it wouldn't be available. And also, they wanted to keep it as fair as possible. So they played their good players, but they certainly didn't play their best because, of course, there is one other player that is missing from this lineup who is on white, and that is Shuttle. So here's the cat caster net. Caster, yeah. She's being very vocal today. She's not usually that vocal. Sorry guys, I know there's StarCraft, but also there's a cat here. And she's wondering why there's all this extra all this extra attention, but What are we talking happy. about? We look pretty like weird cats, don't we? Yeah, there we go. I mean the STV is popping into the oh, wow, assassinated died. by the probe, yeah. Which probe was it though? Was it a gas probe? I think it was a gas probe. Gas probes are always the tricky. Yep. Yeah! Look at that guy. Yeah. He's a boss, but there we go. Looks like Scan is going to be going for some kind of FD here. Probably going to see mine. Yes, we are. And Scan is going to be looking to put a little bit of early pressure on against this fast expand by Best. Yeah, I, I'm glad that Best is going for a fast expand. I think I, if you are against a player that maybe you think you have a slight edge against. Uh, you know, it's not like this is the most ultra greedy build, but it's uh, it's always nice to put yourself in that little advantage and force them uh, to to come to you. Yeah, and it, I mean, best is Dragoon Micro. It's not quite up there with Beesus, but it's very, very close. Like, it's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, best, best Dragoon Micro is absolutely insane. Like, I think maybe Bisu is probably one of the only people other than Jangby, when he was at his prime, that maybe Micro is better mm -hmm. than Bisu does. One of the things I was seeing Scan do with, I mean, not, not this specific push, but a lot of uh, early aggressive pushes is mix in like one medic uh, with the Marines. I saw quite a few people doing that after uh, I saw him doing that. That was like, it was really sick because it makes your Marines a lot more, uh, a lot more durable, but that's not what's happening here at all. I think the best is when you get, um as well, up to <laughs> the observer. Yeah, that's really cool. That's uh, that's boxer esque. I've seen Flash do that to troll people on ladder, and you know what? The best example of that is 100% when he blinded like 10 overlords and then killed the other guy with race. But you know what? Here we go. Looks like the push coming in, not doing too much damage. Best pulling his probes at the right time. It was sick dragoon micro. Yeah, that was really really good. Getting yeah, everything but the tank. So this is the linchpin of this attack. And this gang can keep us yeah. alive. He may be able to continue this push. Oh, well, he might actually lose a dragoon. No, oh my god, that dragoon control. He moves one forward to tank two mines. He knows it was gonna die. I think it was the lowest health dragoon. And uh, right now he's just waiting for the next two. And then Scan doesn't have anything left, so he has to uh, pull that last tank back. I, I think he would have lost that tank if uh, Best didn't know that there was a, a mine out there. So. Yeah, I mean, um, Best couldn't be super greedy there. He could have yeah. gone for the tank, but. Losing these early Dragoons is not fun, especially if a Vulture just sort of runs mm -hmm. in from the top. And that's exactly what Scan was going for, so... He's still going to be able to mine up the third, uh, probably both thirds, so it's going to be annoying. But I think Observer Observatory should be coming up here pretty soon, right? Yep, we do have Reavers on the way with, uh, I believe, that Shot Speed and Observatory, so... This could be a bit of a problem. I've seen Scan struggle a little bit against Reaver plays when I've seen him play on uh, on ladder, but as Kenenzi said before, he's been playing a lot on 1.13 for his Chinese audience and right now, I think, so... Yeah. I mean, he won the 2v2 tournament, right? Oh. Uh, second place. Wait, 
Didn't Scan do pretty well in 2v2? I think he got uh, third right, place in the solo one. I don't think he... Okay, I thought he did well, but maybe that's what I... What that translated it to. Well, it was pretty hard to find results, so that's what I'm, I'm blaming uh, that on. Looks like, uh, I believe Scan has already seen the um, seen the shuttle, but he's going to see it again there, so that's going to be a pretty important moment for him. And it should, and I just turn off all the vision because we don't need to know, but... Well, I was going to say, like, every time I see Spider-Mine's vision range, I just think that somebody at some point thought that that was, like, just a really good idea to have them be able to see so much. But, uh, okay, now we get, gotta see how Best decides to find out where these mines are. Oh my god, he actually killed the mine with a, with a Zealot. But uh, good tank focus fire actually does target the uh, the Reaver, so... And he takes a lot of shuttle damage, I think, from the fire. Yeah. Not that much. He didn't take any hull damage. He only took shield, so he's going to be feeling pretty happy about that. Meanwhile, back at home, he's going to take a third base himself, so he's feeling pretty good taking this third gas, so... I mean, Best is in a pretty amazing position right now. He's not going to get punished for having those on siege, so thank god. Um, wow, uh, I, I don't know about uh, expanding right there. That would be pretty early. Uh, I mean, I guess when you push the shuttle with the Reaver back, that gives you a little bit of room to work with, but well, wow, we might I see mean, a pretty early third. The third is like general only, it's like right there, so it's kind of like you might as well. Yeah, you kind of, by virtue of protecting your natural, you kind of protect that third at the same time. And by pushing out as well, it also gives you the better position to try and stop the shuttle coming into your main. So, fairly standard, I would say, on this map. And as you can see, you see just tank in the perfect place, so it's still going to be able to land his command center. Not going to have any problems, like, blowing up his own tank. You may look to take the uh, 12 o'clock base, like, right away as well. Yeah, it looks like we've got the SCV moving up here. This could be a very, very strong choice. Uh, Scan was the player who told me that if you feel like you're behind, or if you feel like... You need to get something done, either play super greedy or go all in. And I know Scan is certainly the sort of player to play greedy, so... Oh, that block with the gateway. Perfect blocking of the vultures there. Oh my god. Uh, one of the, the true, you know, black magic arts to Brood War is walling in. There, there's just, you can do the same wall in three times and it lets different units through each time. Uh, that's what it feels like, but it's always cool to see pro gamers that know exactly what blocks where and be able to plan that SimCity out. Yeah, they like when you see Protoss players do it as well, they plan it like almost an entire game in advance. Like they'll build a pylon in a random place, and then eventually they'll put another building there. But here we go, double shot actually coming into the main. Four Zealots, two uh, Reavers, and this could do a lot of damage. Oh, no, 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 catching them. Uh, oh, actually, okay, I didn't see what was underneath that uh, eBay, but... None of those scarabs actually got great connections on oh, the... Oh, this could be bad. He's going to lose the shuttle. Both of these Reavers are going to go down. And Scan, actually, with a pretty good defense. Yeah, uh, I mean, losing tanks always feels a little bit bad, but uh, there's still some Zealots left in here to, to clean everything up. And uh, unless he micros those uh, Vultures, uh, at least a couple more... Okay, no, 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 the Zealots were yeah. a lot lower health. That was a pretty good job. We yeah. have a lot of... Or random, I guess they're not random, uh, best knows what he's doing, but moving Dragoons through the map in a single file line, uh, trying to reduce the amount of uh, Dragoons he'll lose from mines as well. Did he snipe the armory? No, 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 no. no. Okay, I was, I was, I, I saw one of those buildings that de uh, was destroyed, but I think yeah, it was, it was a, a turret. Right yeah, it was, it was a turret, not a, not an armory. Looks I got like, really worried about uh, that for a best second. Best is going for his classic add on a million gateways and try to sort of bust their turrets. Yeah, he's, to go for a pilot. yeah. He's Except to, now he has to do it with no shuttles or reavers. Yeah, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. Of course, Best is in a not the best position right now, losing those two reavers without really getting too much done. He got a couple of tanks, I believe, but that was it. But he's going to get this fourth base, and this command center is not going to get away. Yeah, wow, losing his command center is pretty much the, the I guess, the best way to kind of punish a, a Terran player that wants to go for this kind of double expand and. Uh, I'm glad that he's able to get at least some bonus off of that, because otherwise he just has to sit there and deal with having lost the, all those shuttles and reavers, and uh, that is never a good feeling. So best able to get kind of a little bit back here, but still that's uh, kind of a tragedy. He's got the shuttles back in, but this time they're just kind of those bulldog shuttles, no uh, no reavers in sight. 
Yeah, and this is going to be very hard to scan to hold on. His tank count has been obliterated a couple of times, so... Oh, actually, no, they've just spread out. So he's going to build some turrets, some supply depots up here. He doesn't have that many mines, and Best, with all of his gateways, has got such a big army again. Yeah, I've seen Best do this boss so many times, and he's just so efficient at it, and it's really hard to stop. Yeah, like a lot of Scan's armies in the wrong place, and here we go, Best moving in from the low ground, but it doesn't matter, there's just so many units. The eight zealots dropping out of the shuttles, great work there by Best. And this third looks like it could go down. I, wow, no, you're totally right, uh, Cadenzi. Like the, the dropping of the zealots out of the, the speed shuttles just looks totally effortless. Co totally, uh, carpet bombs to the tanks in the front, and you have to basically instantly lift. Wow, as a, a pretty sick bust. There's a pretty deep tank line here for, uh, for uh, scan. So I think pushing any further is a little bit iffy. But he forces the lift, and I think that's kind of all you want because now, I mean, where are you mining off of this Terran? Your main is like starting to uh, get close to mined out. So nobody wants to have 40 SCVs that's your natural. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that does come out of that is Scan is actually, for a very short period, did even up the supply count, but Best forging ahead with 30 supply ahead once again. And, I mean, Scan is trying to get some damage done, but you just can't find it. Best has units in all of the right places. It looks like he actually sniped the command center down as soon as he saw the vultures run down. Did, yeah, that was a really, really nice move. Scan distance mining from his third. Scan finally does have plus one attack. He's likely adding on pl uh, yeah, plus two attack straight away. Do we actually have a second armory in here? I don't think we do as of yet. I love so. how there's that scouting shuttle in his base. Just kind of chilling. going to see the dropship as well. <laughs> and there's nothing that Scan can really do about it. I'll then build a vol uh, Goliath and send it back. But we've got another... Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> I love it. And the zealot lives. Like, that, that that's like the true lines. icing on the top. That was, that's the reason why the total recall thing, guys. That's why that's broken. Because one zealot leave like 10 mines and be perfectly safe. But there we go. Bulldogging once again on top of all the tanks. Oh, he's going for the mine drag. Gets a nice one. <laughs> yeah, gets another one. These mine drags have been super sick. Uh, the zealots are a little bit late there. So, uh... Uh, Best actually lost quite a bit of his Dragoons. I think he's still going to try a couple of cheeky bombs on in here. It does force the Unsiege, but that's not a lot of Dragoons. It's not, but this is... This is not that many tanks either. That's the problem, and he's dangerously getting closer and closer to his minefield. But the good thing is, Scan, Hallmark of... I've always said this, but Hallmark of a good Terran player. Repairing his units, making sure to make the most of it. That tank gets immediately destroyed. Oh, actually, sick friendly fire there. That was a nice Zealot bomb. Oh, he oh, keeps man. going! That's uh, that's actually really uh, important. Now there's not actually that many vultures to body block. He's going to keep doing it. What? This is insane. <laughs> Watching Best just, I mean, kind of play with his food like that. He's like, I'd like to kill these units. And now I'd like you to kill these units. This is the that, uh, you know, stop hitting yourself kind of moment. Yeah, that's one of the major problems with Sea Chunks, but he couldn't afford to go for it. But it looks like we're going to have a storm drop oh, as well. No. And this is just going to be the absolute icing on the cake. Scan still doing a pretty good job. He's resecured his third. He's sending vultures out on the map to lay some mines. And I mean, Best is still. I mean, Best is still in a good position. He's got his fourth base mining. Uh, I mean, let's actually just double check what upgrades he's going for, what tech we've got. Of course, got the Templar archives, but there doesn't seem to be a Stargate yet. So he is going to rely a lot on these gateway units to take this fifth base over here. I think it's like he might be moving out to go for another attack here, or maybe just to block the fourth base from ever being taken. Yeah, if it, he's, he's going to try to block it, but he's also going to go in uh, as a double pronged attack with the storm <laughs> drops uh, on the other side. I, I believe either that or he's just going to bring them with his army. Yeah, I guess uh, both shuttles are with his army and oh yeah four four high templar in one of those shuttles oh, uh man, these tanks are dangerously clumped as well this is going to be so so dangerous so he's going to carpet bomb the zealots and here comes in the high templar we'll see how good these storms can be gonna drop one there wow. oh no oh my god amazing storms the zealots the dragoons just pounding their way through the terran base here and scan still trying to do his best to hold on he is fighting a losing battle. Best macro is absolutely insane. Okay, that's pro transfer, but still, he's got a lot of zealots back at home, and there's even some archons here as well. Yeah, well, best is pretty good. 
Yeah, it looks like these Arthans are just going to clean up the tanks here and there's just going to be nothing remaining for Scan. Don't see what he can do anymore. <clears throat> I mean, he's got plus two damage, but there's just so many units from uh, from Vest here. He's got a, sh a dropship, goes down immediately. And I mean, he's holding onto his natural, but he's going to lose this command center if he's not careful. All Vest needs to do is focus this down. And it looks like he's going to save it with repair, so that's pretty good. Best spell in the game. Indeed it is. Okay, well, uh, I mean, it might be pretty good, but wow, that's a lot of zealots. I feel, is. I feel like every time I see a player just barely hold on, I'm always impressed because that is just a very hard thing to do. But then you you see the remax or you know the next big macro round. You're like, oh, by the way, he just has a lot of stuff. So yeah, yeah. best does not miss macro rounds. That's what he is known for. Yep, he is one of the best macro Protoss players of all time, pretty much. Like this is a complete legend scan. Doing a really good job here against Best, but not managing to pull that nice oh. <laughs> Zealot drop. Oh, yeah. Zealot mind drag, even. As, as if he needed any extra help, right? Oh, man, that was so many SCVs. And GG! A, a storm going off on the other SCVs as well. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I'm actually quite impressed with is look at the position Scan to put his tank in mm -hmm. here. This is such a good location, but either way, Scan just couldn't hold on against Best there. So that was a little bit unfortunate, but that will take White 1 0 up in the series. And that should be pretty cool. Let's move on to the second game. I think that was pretty well deserved. Uh, there were definitely moments there where it felt like Scan was doing really well. Uh, when he uh, secured his third base and was going to take his fourth, um, he did stop uh, a lot of pretty much everything that Best tried to do with Reavers. The Scan just totally shut down. Um, so that was really sick. But it turns out building lots of stuff is just like a, a pretty good strategy. And best micro on those, like, shuttle drops to Bulldog through is just so insane. It was. I am just going to quickly bring up the intro once again, and let's get over onto the next game. See you guys very shortly. Oh my god. I cannot believe I did that again. You know what? I'm just going to fade away outside of the shot and just pretend All right, well, here now anymore. we're uh, duo casting the uh, Rapid and Cadenzi Star League. Yeah, okay. So what I was saying was we just had the official sponsor of the SCPL, Jaffy Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I mistyped it one time, all right? You know what? It's still good. You they're, guys. Not, they're not the official sponsor. I wish they were, because that'd be really cool. But um, yeah, I, you know what? It doesn't matter what I just said, because we're going to be moving on to our second game. We had a really cool TVP between Best and Scan, and we are going to move on now to a TVT on Polaris Rhapsody between these two players. Quickly set up the colors, and then we can get going. Who are the two players? That's, the suspense is killing me. That's what we're going to find out. You gotta wait, it's important. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Let's move on over to the main overlay. Shh. Oh, lovely, a TVT. Oh boy, a Korean TVT at that. Um, Shiny is so badass. The more I watch this guy play, especially when he's playing in uh, 
the Hanjo uh, uh, Starcraft Carnival. I was just like, wow, wow, wow this guy's just really good. But Bamas E is, he's like almost 3k MMR, right? This guy's insane. He was rank one a few times. Yeah, they're both pretty sick players, but Danny is kind of known for his TVT. He's pretty good at TVT. Like, he's played against Scan a lot in TVT and the various Clash of Charles and have at you as well. And genuinely, his TVT is so damn impressive. Like, he does the most ridiculous stuff and gets away with it. Like, he'll proxy everything. Like, he doesn't care. He just builds all of his buildings out in the middle of the map. But you know what? Fam SE has done a really good job so far in the ACBL. He's 5 for 0. He has not dropped a game. And unlike last time, we actually see the win percent, so I don't know why that didn't work before. But you know what? Doing a really good job. He Famasi has won one Terran versus Terran so far, so that could be a pretty important moment. But they're going to be playing on Polaris Rhapsody. Now, I don't know how much you two know A, about this map, and B, how this plays out in TVT, but there has been some insane TVTs on this map. I think I saw a couple of games where there was, like, um, proxy starports and proxy factories. This is a great map for you to float your factory uh, into places where you wouldn't expect it to be. This is mostly just because I forget to scout my main base, but also the proxies are a lot more fun than watching, you know, two hour long siege tank lines. Yeah, I mean, there was some crazy Flash versus Fancy games on this. There was a Fancy versus Elite game, I think, where they both went two port race and then it just sort of escalated from there. I think they had like five ports go all going race, taking the double gas base and everything. But I'm sure 90% of the good Lita games are proxy uh, or, or two, two port, port race, race games. Yeah. It's good to see him playing again though. He's just sort of popped back up in the KCM yeah. series. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty cool. Both uh, Lita and uh, Haya both starting to, or Haya's starting Haya's to play in the too. army. Uh, but this, you can still play in the army, you just can't stream, right? Good point. But he can't play in tournaments. Well, he can't right? play in tournaments. Yeah. Either way, yeah, the other one who came back is free. free really? Back. Yeah. He played I did in not KCM know that. before. Like, he was streaming a lot before, then he just sort of disappeared. I thought he went to the army, but apparently he didn't. And now he's back in the KCM tournaments, so a lot of really cool players coming back. And this one is what happened when I missed one KCM. Yeah, you must have missed one where free and free and Leah played. <laughs> It was one of the ones that I couldn't watch either, but you know what, let's get into the game and then we can go from there, because we can always talk about that afterwards. So let's get started with our second game of the series. Better hide the uh, progress bar, because that would kind of spoil it, especially in the TBC. <laughs> Okay, start in the upper left-hand corner with our orange Terran player from Team White. It is Famas. And down here in the bottom right corner, we have Shiny playing for Soul, the purple Terran. And I mean, both of them very strong players. Uh, this is Shiny's first game for Soul, I think. Uh, in general, they picked him up recently, so he's going to be looking to impress. He's followed up his teammate Scan. I would say. If anything out of the like Korean amateurs, Shiny and Scan are probably the closest rivals. Because they're, they're really similar in skill level. It's uh, kind of weird having uh, Scan, Shiny, and Miso all on the same team. It is. I feel like they all, all three of them kind of embody the same player. And that is that player that both is good at playing in Korean uh, leagues as up and comers, but also. Uh, Actually plays quite a bit against uh, the foreign Brood War community too. Yeah, like, I mean, Shiny even came up with the username Money King because he wanted that money, and you know what? He came and got the money. Like, that's what he did. He came to foreign tournaments, he won some money, disappeared for a while, and now he's back again. So, but I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. We've had people take games off of Shiny now. Games are getting a lot closer between some of these players, but oh my god, Shiny is getting completely unlucky here. Gonna get scouted immediately going for this proxy barracks. Oh, 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 that is so heartbreaking. I mean, half the credit goes to, to good scouting, so you do get rewarded for that, but uh, ultimately, yeah, that's a big win for FAMAS. Yeah, that's gonna completely negate the sort of early forward uh, ranks. It's gonna be a lot harder to push on any sort of fast expansions. And it looks like Famas is, or Famas is going to be adding on his gas here, and so is Shiny. So somewhat mirror builds, but of course, 
uh, Chinese factory should be a little bit later, and Famas going in for that SCV harassment once again. Do you know? So F Famas is actually named after a uh, uh, a gun, right? Um, it's yeah. pr pretty popular in like uh, other like FPS games, but Famas stands for Fusil d'Assault de la Manufacture de Arms de Saint Etienne. Or in English, the assault rifle from the Saint Etienne Weapon Factory. It just is alliterated, or uh, it's uh, abbreviated, FAMAS. I had no idea. And well, you there know you what? go. That it's kind of crazy just how much information you have in your head, Raph. Well, I just read that off Wikipedia, but you can. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to pick you up. You know, you didn't There's no say illusion. Anything. Oh man, I mean. Rapid cast so many games, he just picked up all that FPS knowledge. He's just a gun expert now. There you go. You were born in Texas as well, so it's kind of assumed. I do know people expert. with these, but that's a story for another day, Kix. It is, but we have the factory coming up. The command center is going to be coming up soon, but it looks like Famas sent his SCV a little bit too early. I'm not going to be able to get that quick uh, build of that, but I mean, the, the timings are pretty similar again. So despite losing that first. Uh, that first barracks. I mean, apparently it doesn't even matter. You yeah. just do that, and then if it doesn't work, then whatever. Why are when, when my proxies get scouted, it's like totally over, but apparently you could just play a regular game off the back of that. Okay. You can, and I mean, the, the important thing is here, Famas is going to get the very fast scout with his barracks. Like, he's not really going to see anything too insane that it's like, oh my god, I'm going to die now, but he will see eventually... That there is going to be a command center and it is ever so slightly behind his so he's going to be feeling pretty good about that now shiny is a very strong player so uh, famas should be feeling pretty good moving forward but oh my god i'm gonna die now <laughs> you know since 4 a.m starting to play like, really hard right now you can just cosplay kicks right cat here. in the back <laughs> It is actually, uh, uh, it's almost midnight here. It is. So it's been a, been a very long day. And this is a TVT, so... I mean, keep in mind, these guys are also playing this at midnight. Yeah, uh, midnight Korea time, so... Korea time, yeah. It's almost like we're live, but no. <laughs> it's like we're live in their time zone from our time zone. It's crazy. <laughs> How does it work? Time zones are pretty confusing. Now... A lot of people don't know this, but I've never mentioned this, I think, on stream, but the first week I did the SCPL, I arranged it the week before the times changed, and it got to the playing week, and basically no one knew what time the games were, not even me. Oh, I could not work it out, because America was in uh, Daylight Savings already, Europe wasn't, Korea doesn't go into Daylight Savings at all, it was just a complete mess, but you know what, it worked out after that, because everyone's time sort of synced up, but yeah... It's not too crazy, but we've got three factories coming in from FAMAS. Looks like we're going to have three from Shiny as well. So both of them are going to be going heavy vultures to start with. Going to skip their second gas for a while, just so they get up all the extra extra factories and everything. Yeah, and they both know about everything because of the, the floating racks. So it's not really like anything's a, a mystery. If we see anything built like in a weird location, then obviously he's trying to hide that. But I don't even think we see any of that. So just uh, lots of vultures. Oh boy. Lots of vultures and no armory yet. It's nearly six minutes into the game and neither player has opted to add their armory. Uh, Famas is the one player who is going for a starport, so that's going to be a little bit more interesting. Whereas Shiny going for more vultures on the ground. So he's going to be trying to take, uh, take out that uh, sort of ground control here. And there is a supply depot helping wall this off. We got the edge to the vulture spam in here because Wraiths are probably not very good yet. I think it depends on sort of the way this goes, but I think Shiny could actually wall this off if he lands his barracks there, so that'd be a huge, huge moment if he could wall that off and run and kill all the vultures, but I don't think he's going to do that. I mean, it's possible he will, because he's keeping this here, but he can't really be too sure on how many vultures his opponent well, has. Well, this is, like, better than pro gamer plays right now. You I was going to say, that actually makes just so much sense. He's going to do it. Sure he is. Yeah. yeah. This... Oh my god, what a legend. I, I knew it. Like, building those two barracks there is so much problem. Like, look, he can't he get, to kill it to get back into his own base. And let's, yeah, there we let's go. Talk about how, how quickly vultures and wraiths kill buildings. 
Actually, pretty quickly when there's a lot of them. I was going to say, that is actually like 25 vultures. Oh man, this is so many vultures, but still, the vultures coming in behind the attack... Uh, move is going to start attacking the wrong units and here we go what is the target firing going to be like on both sides here i need doing a really good job of this engagement. yeah no i mean that is that's the reason you make that play right more vultures versus less uh the wraith here uh really wishes he got a chance to be useful at all but um it's just more versus less on the ground and that's going to force a massive scv pull to block the uh the choke and the vultures deal massive damage the SCVs are the strongest Terran unit. So oh, he's spamming repair on this Vulture as well. Action. There was like five Vulture shots that hit that and it didn't die. That is some sick repair. Oh, man. come on! What are we? No! He can't keep getting away with it! He <laughs> repaired that Vulture forever! I mean, it's still massive SCV casualties, right? So, this it, race, that's gotta feel good. This race has got five kills, though. It's slowly <laughs> doing stuff, but... <laughs> the problem is, Shiny just has five factories now, he's pumping, and Famas still only has four, so slowly but surely he is going to lose here. But, I mean, he's doing a very good job trying to hold on, this race still getting value, and if anything, I'd like to see him try and wall that off himself, if he the, could. The Wraith is just going to run out of fuel and just drop from the sky and crash and burn. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that the Wraith only comes built, just like... Every uh, every vulture gets three spider mines. Every wraith gets only like twenty uh, auto attacks. So, like it's, it's got to run out of fuel pretty them. soon. Like if you think about normal wraiths, they last about five seconds when they get attacked by something. So, pretty shoddily made. Uh, Terran engineering not so uh, not as good, despite having so many oil barons. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's running out of the best Terran unit now. He's only got like one of those left repairing. He's had to move on to producing the second best Terran unit in Vultures. You know the crazy thing, Shiny actually put a um, Shiny put a mine to stop him building the barracks to wall this off. So Shiny is next That's level insane. here. That's insane. supply Oh up. my goodness. And you know what? That was a pretty quick TVT nine minutes, but that was really really cool. And no, gonna... that was that was insane. That was impressive. That's gonna take uh, yeah, soul up two. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's one for one. So one one here in the series. And we're going to be moving on to the next game here. Yeah, uh, that one move that I like to call the kicks, where you land your barracks to block the uh, vultures from getting back into the base. So sick. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's really not much that can be said except... And 4.28pm, as I mentioned. 4.28pm. <laughs> and he's got to do it when he's got 69 minerals as well. 4.20, 69, let's just do it. But yeah, you know what? Uh, it's going on to the third game here. I'm going to quickly bring up the intro and we'll be back in just a moment. I certainly need to. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We are back, guys. Welcome back to the SCPL. I'm your host, Kix. With me today in my prison cell is Rapid and Cadenzi. So a uh, huge welcome to them. 
Rapid has come all the way from Korea to do this because he's obviously not come here for holidays. Oh no, 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 no! I just came here for STPL. Yeah, he's actually just come here for STPL. You know, it's, the holiday was just like a plus. It's like, a clever ruse on my part, but it looks like I fooled everyone again. Gotcha. But I am here, and it's super exciting uh, to uh, be a part of what is. Uh, I guess it's the only uh, Brood War team league running uh, right now. But yeah. it's uh, also, I think, we're in the middle of. Probably the best series uh, that we could have asked for. This is two of our uh, South Korean pro gaming uh, clans, uh, which are like just, just kind of a step below teams, just clans of uh, pretty sick players. Yep. So yeah, Rapid is in not in Europe. He's in the UK. So that's well. I so guess it's a I subtle know. distinction there, but perhaps becoming less subtle by the day. Yeah, but let's move on to the overlay. Let's introduce the games. I know these two are incredibly tired, so I don't want to keep them up too late. So if I move on over to the overlay, let's have a look at who are going to be play uh, players here. We're going to have another TBT. It's going to be between Geiko, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm probably not, and Dandy for Seoul. So this should be pretty interesting. Dandy doing a pretty good job for his team. Uh, three wins for one at the moment. And uh, Geiko, this is going to be his first game for White, but this is certainly not going to be his last, so... You say that and he never plays again. The kick's curse is real. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, he actually quit the game after this. He went to go be a salary man. I mean, I'm excited to see him play. I have not gotten a chance to uh, watch really either one of these uh, teams play very much. The last time I watched Seoul play, I think they uh, got kind of smashed, so... Um, I was pretty surprised by that. And, and honestly, the biggest surprise is that one of these teams mo won't make it uh, into uh, the next round. So yeah, that's... that seems like almost inconceivable when you look at... It's just so league. stacked. Yeah, uh, their, their teams are very, very stacked, but IRK took out both of them. So IRK winning the first spot to the playoffs from Group B. The Group A games have been decided already. Uh, I'll sort of post that all up tomorrow. And, I mean, we're moving on to our second TBT here. This is going to be on Grand Line. Grand Line, a pretty cool map for TBT. Uh, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock bases have gas. And 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock are both uh, islands with gas as well. So, hopefully, uh, just for the sake of my fellow casters here, they're not going to be kept awake by a two-hour long TBT. But... Don't give me the terror TBT. I'll just sleep through it. And then I'll be good. <laughs> then you'll wake up for uh, Mind vs. Miso in the fourth game. But you know what? This is going to be a lot of fun. Let's move on over to the game and let's get started. Okay, sick. At least they're not cross positions. Uh, down in the bottom right hand corner in the red is Dandy. And his opponent in the bottom left hand corner in the orange is uh, Geiko. Gecko. I mean, that's basically the only way you can pronounce that. Uh, if you were saying, uh, so sometimes the G and the K uh, in Korean can be the same character. If it were more like Gecko, I think that is the uh, Korean word for like uh, clean, as in um, like not dirty, clean. What about Keiko? Keiko? Uh, that's not a word in Korean. But it sounds so much better. I think. Yeah, this is pretty close to just like the Korean phonetic way to spell gecko, but it's not, so I, I don't know. Beats me. Yeah, I mean, gecko sounds kind of like a Japanese word as well, but it's not. So I guess we'll find out. Uh, hopefully, maybe someone in white in the chat will know what his name means. Maybe it's just a weird word he saw once, like many of the other pro gamers of the past, where they're like, they see something on the table like Nest T. How did he come up with that name? Looks out the window. Sees a Geiko, whatever that is. <laughs> the magical, mystical, mystical, sparkling unicorn Geiko. Like, well, hey, I, I want to be that thing. Ike is a dog, but I don't know if that really... Either way, it looks like Geiko is actually going to be going for a command center first, possibly. Oh, no, he's going to build his barracks just on 12 supply rather than 13. Or on 11 even. So his, uh, his barracks a little bit later. Dandy's in a better place to go and scout as well. So 
I'd give the advantage as of the moment to Dandy, but Dandy of course adding his gas as well, so that's a pretty big divergence in their builds. TT1 says it's about a, a K-pop actress, singer, I don't doubt that. Probably the reason for most things. Yeah. I mean, that's... I guess that's kind of normal. Uh, but here we go, looks like we're gonna have that command center coming down after the barracks, so it's gonna be a warm racks double for Geiko and uh, Dandy gonna go probably for the factory fast expand. More important to fill wiki copy paste in the chat now. I'm we so do. glad that I can read Wikipedia in Twitch chat. That's uh, obviously the most significant learning experience that we could have now. Well, you, know, you were reading on your phone just now, so I mean that's next level. Well, right, but like I was like that's I was just reading things people actually cared about. <laughs> wow, throwing shade at TT one. After the the number of things that I can talk about, like the the total pool of possible conversation topics it goes to zero after i read the sentence their son rhythm and there's just nothing you could really say after that i don't know i think uh, we've proven that rapid is actually a massive bully as well so sorry that was really loud right next to the microphone <laughs> <laughs> i really emphatically set my glass down on the table it's like ah oh, <laughs> can't believe you said that just right by the microphone oh all of you headphone users out there just really enjoyed that particularly poignant moment. Oh man, I th that's the last time I say anything bad about Rapid. I don't know what's <laughs> next. <laughs> oh god, alright. So TVT, what exciting things can we hope for in this pre-five minute phase of the game? Well, we've got a Vulture, and there's only currently Marines, but they are going to be a Bunker. But So there's not going to be too much. Are we going to see a starfall this time, or are we going to see more factories? That could be a pretty big divergent thing here, but as you said, TBT, unless you go for like a BBS or an 8 racks, which is very, very rare. Uh, there's not really too much that happens in the first five minutes. <laughs> kind of what, is that, what I was alluding to. Sometimes you'll see, um, especially if it's high factory counts early, like if you're going for a for two-factor, something like that, if, if one player loses like an early... Uh, vulture or tank all of a sudden you can see snowballs start to roll it's like oh wow he'll, he'll just never have enough but uh, I don't, don't know if, uh, exactly how far we're gonna get along into this because it does look like Dandy is being uh, pretty aggressive when you say that but Geiko is the one with three factory so oh wait does it I just wow I did not know yeah he went for three what? factory here so he's going is that what for... a factory looks like okay it is yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen one before, Rapid, but just for the newer players on the stream, uh, this is actually a factory. It's where you build the vultures and the tanks. Oh, wait, you can see a fourth one. It goes four fact. That's just like... That, that's extended. the get out of my game build. Let's see, I can build any number of factories and still win the game. Is he building a fourth factory right down below that fourth, uh, the third one? No, 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 it's an SCV mining. Yeah. I saw the little animation, I was getting my hopes up. The thing is, realistically, 3-pack this quick is quite normal. Uh, off the back of one racks FE, you want to get your third factor around 27 supply. So you usually go for double factory, which is what he did. But Dandy, where he did go for the quick and gas, is going into two factory tanks. So while his uh, factory count is going to be a lot lower, his tank count is going to be a lot higher. And as you can see, he's got mines already out on the map, primed to try and do some damage and scouting as well. Bunker at the front, so there's no real uh, ability to, I guess, punish this. I mean, he's got speed vultures, so if you're trying to get into your opponent's base, and you're letting speed vultures get into yours. So, uh, realistically, as long as there's some sort of decent block here by the ramp, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, he does need to be careful, though. I think it'd be better if he actually sat his units. I was going to say, you never really know how fast speed vultures are until you think you have uh, something wa uh, walled off or there's some SimCity maze and they just zoom right through it like an extra long Nokia snake. Yeah, there's, there's literally no real reason for him to not to leave like a tank or something just hold position down here, I guess. It saves his gas up here. He wants to get as much gas as possible to get as many tanks quickly. And it looks like he's going to actually try and push out here. This is quite a dangerous move. There's a lot of vultures. I do have mines. Yeah. No siege mode yet, of course, because that's going to come a little bit later. So it's not like you really have the ability to snipe vultures as they zoom past. 
Now this is certainly something. He's going three factory tank right now. He's completely uh, gone off of the idea of going for vultures. He went for 12 and that's enough to get a decent number of mines. And now he's going to try and out. Oh, this is going to be a big mine. Oh my god. Did he really only take one of those mines? Oh, okay, that's the one. That's the one Whoa. right there. Uh, and now there are no more tanks, Kicks. There's no more tanks. He's got two Goliaths, and Goliaths are pretty good against Vultures. But what are you going to do when you're only producing two tanks at uh, a time? You're, I'd say he's actually still ahead in the tank count, just. But that's only because he started building them late. Uh, the Scout Marrick should actually go down... And here we go, I mean, the three tank production, gonna start putting He's Aker in an incredible store. lead. Oh, so he is actually quite dangerous. He actually takes one of those mine hits, so... Uh, it's two, two tank shots to kill a mine, right? I believe so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so as he's pushing through there, he'll be able to take down two mines at a, a time. Unfortunately, I think there's mines on that ramp, so I'm not sure how Vision's going to affect that. But what have we here, Kicks? I mean... What have we here, Kix? There we go. Is that his natural third? It is. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you've seen this map, but there's actually a path that goes all the way around. It's actually a raised bridge over this area that oh, like, allows an SUV yeah. to run up here. But Danny going for that hidden expo, trying to do what he can. He's lost the tank battle, and he's going to try and get a little, bit bleh, a little bit of position here. Oh my god, he needs to be careful. That's going to be a huge amount of mines going down. Getting another tank... And Geiko is about to get an incredible position on the map here. Even bringing her CVs here just to cement his position. The difference in tank count is just going to be so pronounced. Uh, and there's just like, what, what is he going to do here? As soon as Siege Mode finishes, he's just going to walk right outside his natural, Siege up. And I, I mean, maybe this is the true genius of the, the uh, Proxy Expo or the Hidden Expansion. Is that Dandy is going to, or uh, Geiko is going to, Feel like he's containing Dandy, but then he's just going to expand behind it. Yeah, but the trouble is, the position that Geiko's taking, he's taking the high ground, and if he takes this high ground, he cuts off the entire middle of the map, mm -hmm. and it forces Dandy through this small ramp. I'm not even sure if he can, maybe if he scoots around the edge, he can get up there, but... Maybe if he takes the London Underground. <laughs> takes the tube all the way up to the other base. <laughs> there we go. This is some next I don't know, he's only got 400 minerals, that can't possibly be enough to afford the train trip. But there we go, we've got uh, Geiko taking that island base, as I thought he might do. No, and he's just he... pretending. Yeah, he's, he's just finding the mineral, he's like, I want to give, I want to, my oil baron wants to expand, he's trying to find my oh, oil even. He's like but... three star ports in there, one at a time. <laughs> what a god. Oh, but this is six factories coming up for Geiko before a third base, so Geiko knows he's got a good position. Does he have an armory? Yes, he does. It's getting plus one attack as well. And he's going to be looking to do a little bit of drop action here, and this is going to be pretty good for him. Looks like he's scouted almost every base other than the <laughs> secret one. <laughs> this is... Oh my goodness. And he's taking note from your super secret streams. He's had my super secret base. And it's working pretty well, but the trouble is he's set up a nice siege line at the front. But does he have any units back here to defend the drop? Uh, that'd be a no kicks. He has a Goliath, two Goliaths. Uh, That's actually going to be enough. But look, they're not walling that off, so the vulture is going to get into the uh, the SCV line. But the vultures are pretty dumb, so they're just going to say. Wait, what? Oh. Okay, yes, he has exactly what he needs to defend there, Kix. Uh, he does. You'll, you'll notice by the death of all four vultures that that was exactly the right amount of units to allocate to defend against that drop. That was pretty cool. Uh, looks like that second Goliath spawned just in time. And now we have Dandy going in with his own units. He's probably going to go and take this island. At least I hope he will do. But he's not got anything in there yet. Oh, he's pulling off his dropships. Okay. That makes sense. But, I mean, he's got the, the gas advantage now. Slowly but surely, he may be able to pull his way back in the game. He's nearly even supply against a player who, I mean, he's lost his army twice, so that's pretty impressive. I love that one hero SCV built the entire command center, built the entire refinery, mining for like two minutes by itself. And like, if, if at any point any vulture shaped unit ever like graced the presence of that 12 o'clock location, everything there would just die horrible, unspeakable deaths, but nothing has even remotely gone close to that. Uh, I wish we could check, can we check uh, Vision for Geiko? 
<laughs> he doesn't even know that 12 o'clock exists on this map. Yeah, the one place he's not checked, the only base he's not seen right now. But you know what, Geiko has his fourth base coming up. He of course does have the island, he's got a ferry unit over. But the most important thing he can be getting is this gas, and that's exactly what he's gone to mine straight away. Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much if you have a secret base, if your opponent has like two more non-secret bases and they have you contained. Yeah, but if Dandy just goes for that island, he could be even on bases again, so... And it looks like Dandy looking to do a little bit of harass of his own. Jacob's actually completely ignored the top half of this, trying to put on such a heavy, heavy contain here. And this could be exactly what Dandy needs to try and get back in this game. There's no defense up at this top left base. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they do have similar supplies, so I'm not sure how much of it is, you know, workers versus army, but... Oh, no. Yeah, he is going to scout this with at least one uh, vulture sent up there, and that can be just, like, really annoying, really disruptive, so... This, this actually could get a little crazy. Yeah, looks like we're going to have vulture on vulture action, but Dandy, of course, with the advantage, going to be able to take the high ground and then take out these vultures before they move in here. He's going to leave that one vulture there just to block this, and there's going to be a lot of SCV deaths. Well, we have the moral high ground of not having secret bases everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I lost, but at least I didn't have to resort to hiding bases somewhere. Yeah, I mean, Dandy does usually play PvT, so getting a little bit of his Protoss Edge in this TVT here, and I mean, Geiko looking to build up this heavy, heavy contain, and now what is Dandy going to do? He's going to have to rely entirely on dropships if he wants to get absolutely anywhere on the map. And luckily enough, that's what he's got, so looks like we are going to see a pretty big drop now. Does Geiko see this? Looks like Dandy is going through the one avenue the Geiko cannot actually see, so this is a pretty important moment. He's going to move up to that top left base again, and we could have a bit of a weird base race here where he goes for this one. Man, the ability not to be able to move any unit due up is really hurting Geiko right now. He just has no idea that base is there, he doesn't know these drops are here, and this is just going to do a lot of damage. Oh my god, this is awesome for, uh, for Dandy. There's a lot of tanks coming in to defend. The tanks of Danny are not sieged. They've not sieged quick enough. And, oh, it looks like Geko actually got the first siege. You know, Danny is sieged in a bit of a weird position. Not creating the line, really. Not really defending anything. And this is going to mean Geko can uh, clear this up. But is this going to be enough damage, though? There's so many units for Dandy doing so much work. And it looks like he's going to hold this oh. off. Wow, uh, yeah, this that actually wouldn't have been enough to clear it up if it hadn't been for the reinforcements coming through. So, yeah, Geiko did have to send kind of round two up there, but uh, crucially enough, the command center does stay alive. So that's the, the big victory there for Geiko. Even though he took a little bit of a rough trade, command center lives. Oh, here comes the SCV. It's going to finally... He's going to try and expand there and accidentally... Oh, he scanned it. it. He's found it. There we go. This one SCV is going to take out everything. He's actually building the turret up here. And here we finally see some units. Now, Dandy can reinforce this. He does have the four dropships, but Dandy's time is numbered on this base. Now, I really do not understand why Dandy hasn't taken this base. Uh, I guess he does have a lot of minerals, a lot of gas yeah, right mineral now. Mineral only. Yeah. And it's I mean, he does have a 3k bank, but the more minerals you have, the more CCs you can build, the more hidden bases you can make. Uh, but Geiko, I think, finally has got the edge in this game, and I think Dandy is going to have a very hard time pulling this back now. Well, Dandy has money for days, so he's just going to sit and chill, do his dropship play, and see what happens. Yep, very worthwhile doing. He can actually break out the bottom half of this container if he so chooses to. We're going to have dropships dropping on dropships here, and Geiko dropping out some Goliaths, doing a little bit of extra damage to the dropships, and here we go. Is this drop in the main going to be enough? And he's just maybe going to lose any units here. No. I don't know. That's a very, very nice trade. He's got a so lot of Goliaths. And all the SCVs and like million oh, tanks okay. and million Goliaths. Uh, that's a lot of tanks. Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah. I think you are correct, Cadenzi. He's going to lose a little bit too much. And yeah, he's got a huge bank, right? But that's just not going to do it. GG. Dandy taps out, and Geiko takes the win for white. And Geiko laughs out. No matter. 
that's actually pretty funny. The dandy at the end there actually had a supply lead, but I think most of that was in SCVs mining out his two only bases. So a little bit unfortunate for dandy. He did his best, but uh, he did get hard contained, and that's one of the very dangerous things about that map especially. So unfortunately for him, that is going to take white 2-1 up in the series. And we're going to be moving on to our possible final game of the evening if uh, Miso can't win this one out. And it's going to be Mind versus Miso. And that's going to be a really cool game. So let me just quickly load up the next replay. I'm going to play the intro again and we'll be back in just a moment. And these two can uh, quick nap. You can just lay there, it's fine. Oh, that's all good. Okay, let's get back to the camera. Uh, Cadenzi is apparently dead, so that's it. Rip Cadenzi. You know what? Someone, I mean, people have been joking someone was going to die here today in prison, and it looks like it's Cadenzi first. So. Cadenzi. <laughs> bad. That was really bad, but you know what? I'll take it. It's always good to have someone else to make puns, because my puns are just terrible. Cadenzo-y. That one doesn't work as well. It's the best I could do is short notice kicks. Your standards are unreasonably high. They are, I guess. But then again, I have high standards because my puns are so bad. So I need someone to raise the level, you know, and just unfortunately that didn't happen. I'll set up extra straight. There we go. Level raised. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, potentially only one more game uh, left. I would say that that looks a little bit more likely when you see which players are playing. If you guys didn't see that earlier, uh, you'll have to wait until Kicks appropriately updates the uh, player overlay, and then we'll get a chance to see. I'm not going to spoil anything. Yeah, you know what? I'm like whenever I cast with someone else, I just get slower and slower. So that's just one of the things. When I'm when I'm solo, I can just do everything straight away, but. Uh, trying to bounce off of people makes it a little bit more difficult, but you know what? It's good. It's a lot of fun, and it's been really cool. So let's move on over to the overlay, and let's have a look at who is going to be playing in this game. It's mine versus me, so woo! It is in mind, in case you're wondering, it's not mind one to one it is going to be mined from White Clan. So the one who was in the ASL, and of course his opponent is going to be the other ASL competitor. That's going to be Miso, and that is going to be a lot of fun. So that should be really, really cool. So let's see what maps they're going to be playing on. They're going to be playing on Neo Moonglaive. So pretty cool map here. Pretty good for TBZ, I would say. But so far in the SCPL, Zerg have been, Zerg have been doing pretty well. Uh, four for two in ZVT right now. ZVP very, very balanced on this map so far. Uh, but you know what? It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get into the game and let's see who is going to win in this clash of ASL Titans in the fourth game of White vs. Soul. Wow, Kicks, your cat is really good at those intros. She is. And you know what? Starting us off in the bottom right position in 7 o'clock, we do have the Soul Teal Zerg. It's going to be Miso. Yeah, and his opponent in the 12 o'clock location, uh, spawning in close positions on the third three player map, <laughs> is uh, Mind. She's We're playing danger. Karen for White. So, thick donation coming in. 
Big uh, thanks. Th yeah, thank you, Hiru. Uh, did I get. I bet I got your. Yeah, you have to say it Hiro. with this like weird lilt that makes like almost no sense, but you know it should be there. It's like Hiru. 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 You know what? Cheers for the donation. That definitely paid off the pizza we uh, paid for earlier. So I'm going to give Rapid back his 20 I need to said twenty dollars, but it's because everything I read is in dollars and math. Oh, it's worth at everything. least eight times twenty dollars. I am very, very confused right now. You know what? Numbers. It's midnight. I've been up since like How does seven. It work? Yeah, you've been up uh, since four. So no math allowed on stream. So hopefully Misa wins, so we get a nice match. This <laughs> long TBT that would be fantastic. Not allowed to cast it. <laughs> Scandal. Trying to kill us all. Scan versus mind goes on for two hours. Oh and god! Start on Judgment Day. But yeah, you know what? This is gonna be a pretty cool map. We have uh, Miso going for a pull first off the back of a drone trick. So, Cadenzi, I'm not sure how that really affects going for an early pull. Is that a pretty good move? We just do because you know whatever style points. Not yeah, easy. it's a. Uh, I think somebody there's this really long. Uh, it was deep in the thread, so it wasn't the OP. There was this long discussion where this super shill is trying to defend uh, whether or not you know going for the extractor trick is worth it. And I think the end analysis is that it gives you, I believe, like three and a half more minerals. Yeah, if you go nine pill, you want to do it, and if you do like almost any other build. Oh man, mine went for the engineering bay block. But that's not going to do too much a against. Jerk against all the lings but it will of course give him the heads up that the lings are coming yeah and he should be able to block his uh, oh when he blocks the now. expansion again anyway and oh, he's one zero going back to do the scd no this is so mine knows that he has six zerglings almost in his base and he's still building engineering bays to try to be a uh, annoying well I, at, at that point i'm like you know, how many bunkers can i afford right now but he's he's really doing the utmost, and he knows that he has enough of an SCV wall. Wait, this hatchery it, that's is not off place. That's not on p position. That's off by a hex. Mine's harassment works. Are you kidding? Wait, is it? It is no. better yeah. to cancel your hatchery and rebuild it in the correct location than it is to allow a hatchery to build faster off a hex. No, no, it looks fine to me. I'm crazy. Really? But the engineering bay was one slot lower. But the engineering bay can be built next to Ah, of course it can. Maybe I'm wrong. It but, that like actually, now that away. I now that I look at it closer, <laughs> let's uh, let's just go with uh, let's go with Cadenzi. But you know what? Uh, what you said before did make sense. So you're not entirely wrong. Your rapid facts, as someone said, is pretty good. But still, uh, pretty crazy. We got the lair coming up for Miso. So Miso, a very strong advocate of using two hatch builds throughout of all the Clash of Chars he played in. And the few games he's played in SCPL as well, he really does like his two hatches. Oh, wow, not being able to expand after nine pool. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a little bit rough. And I, I do believe that is on position. So as much fun as we had talking about it being off the hex, uh, now that I look at it on the minimap, it actually looks perfectly nestled in the nice semicircle uh, of minerals. Yeah, I think it's just the minerals in a weird place. That is true. Uh... That back mineral patch is definitely the worst mineral patch in the world. I'm almost certain that's off by a hex still. It doesn't doesn't seem right, but then again, maybe it's just this map. I can't remember. I have I've lost my mind now. So Miso's going for the speed link to hatch, so he has to do a lot of damage with these circles, otherwise it's really not worth it. Yeah, the SCVs are a little bit slow coming out there to body block. Uh, as is, they're still. Pretty good against Zerglings overall, and there's still a bunker coming up to be a, a little bit of a wall. Uh, so that's not enough damage done. He yeah, but he's about to get the last through. Marines, possibly. Oh my god. Those, how did those Zerglings just thread the needle and kill off the perfect number of Marines? Like, I mean, they still all die in the end, but that was... That actually did thin the Marine count down. Yeah, thinning the Marine count down is really important for when you get your first six meters from two hatch here. Yeah, because I guess the thing is as well, mine can't push across the map now to put any pressure on. He's not sure how many lings there are going to be in now. Miso doing a really good job keeping his uh, overlord on top of that little ledge here, just getting free scouting information. Sees the SCV coming in, 
but the one important thing for uh, mind is he is going to see exactly how many drones are on gas, and this is going to be a very big tell. Yeah, he's going to know that it's three in the main, three in the natural. Uh, and well, wait, okay, so he's not going to get in the main, but you can you can pretty much know that you're, you're going to have to face off against a lot of mutas pretty soon. Yeah, and that is like the standard timing for the muta eggs to start, and you did see the eggs try in, so. You Yeah, uh, I mean, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> Miso, of course, playing from a little bit behind, but he does manage to pull a little bit back. And here we go, two lings actually getting on top of the turrets. This could be such a big, big moment in the game, but the uh, lings are going to get caught out. Yeah, uh, and any damage your building takes while it is building will have to be re-repaired after the building completes. So, I mean, it's just every little click, everything you have to pay attention to um, is uh, a really big deal here. So... Splitting off the weakened mutilist to continue to try to get any little bit of damage done and then rejoin so it's at the bottom of the stack. Um, I, wait, okay, no, 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 that's not what you're supposed to do with the weak muta. Uh, still quite a few mutas, but the missile turrets are up just in the nick of time, so I think yep. mine is okay I'm here. Not Zirkle and still alive, how you didn't paint the mineral pet. So no! Oh, but mine knows it's there. He sent another marine. But the the one crazy thing is here, mine knows he's against two hatch mute with very low drone count in the natural. So he is doing nothing but building turrets right now. He knows all he has to do is weather the storm just long enough until he gets a big bio force where he can push out on the map and hopefully win the game. And Miso is adding on a few drones though, so he might be able to take turrets in and maybe possibly. Okay, but he is kind of. A little bit all in right now. Yes, indeed. And I mean, Misa keeps trying to push in, trying to do any damage he can, but Mind's defense is just absolutely sick. There's a reason why people say Mind is the second best Terran at the moment, and it's plays like this where he just doesn't falter at this kind of harassment. Yeah, no, Mind's playing this super well. Uh, I, I would say that there are definitely maybe. Uh, you, you can't talk about games being played totally perfectly. Everybody makes mistakes. The most perfect game of Brood War in the world is, is still not perfect. So uh, it was a little bit clutch there at the beginning. He lost a lot of Marines, but he did hold on against the, uh, the Zergling Floods early, and now he is sort of reaping the benefits of having just barely been able to put up uh, the exactly as many turrets as he needed to not only protect his drone line, but also his production. And now he has this big bio ball heading out on the map. Yep, and what exactly is Miso going to do about this? He doesn't have any links on the ground to try and soak them. one on his mute, believe. But he will need really good... Oh, he doesn't even. But he will need really good micro to hold this off anyway. Ooh. He doesn't really have the drones to add sunkens either, so he's just trying to delay the best he can in the middle of the map. But it's going to be so, so difficult for him. Yeah, I think his top mute is red as well, so it's not... Uh... Yeah, ooh, actually, wow, it's quite a few very, very red. So he's going to start losing mutas right here, and, and it just really makes it uh, a whole lot wow, more difficult. Wow, he's even losing a lot of was, was that his muta stack, uh, Overlord? No, 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 he must have rebounded already. But yeah, he's going to start to have these mutas here. It's one, two, dropping down, even if he kills this uh, group of marines. I mean, marines are so, so cheap compared to how expensive mutas are on only two bases. That wasn't a bad trade though, he got three uh, three mutas for a lot of medics, a lot of marines, and Mind's push has been completely muted again, and Miso is just slowly building up his mute account still. How is Mind's tech doing though? The Mind is adding on his double star board, this is going to be an important moment when he gets his uh, irradiate and things like that, it's going to be very difficult for Miso to hold on, and this is a lot of damage from Mind. He doesn't have plus one yet, uh, if he did this would be a lot more oh, just got it. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's plus one for mutas, though, or, uh, as, as well, right? No, he no. actually never got that. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, so that is really good for mind. He does have it now, but it does seem pretty late, actually. Yeah, I, I definitely expected that earlier. So it's plus one versus plus one. It's still a lot of damage on weakened mutas, but the glade bounces, of course, are going to make that weapons upgrade, uh, of course, a lot more pronounced on clumps of units that are not splitting. And so once again, uh, Miso is able to wipe the, the bio count, and I mean, that is just absolutely sick. He's, he, he's not expanding behind this, so he is still expecting and needing to get damage done yeah, with this. he is basically on a clock. As soon as the science vessel and the radiator is done, he is also done. <laughs> yeah, there's only so many ways you can split your mutas against the radiator. Like, 
the briefest second a radiate goes off in this clump of meters, it's gonna be uh He's gonna get the second rough. gas though. And obviously the glaive bounce is doing a lot to this turret at the top. Oh wow, he actually kills the turret with the glaive bounce, it's pretty sick. He's killing the SUVs, repairing the, the gas. The Marines too. are cutting off the reinforcing mutilants. Oh, so they are they're gonna get another overlord and Miso I don't think has got over fifty eight supply in about three minutes, so but Miso does get his mutilus out, he's still got a lot of them. Yeah, and Muta, uh, uh, Miso's units are so potent right now. Plus one Muta's, I, I can't count the number of times, all you have to do is just get one or two good uh, Muta micros in, and all of a sudden there's just not enough brains to deal with that. So, I, I mean, there's still absolutely a way that Miso could like control his way back into this, and I think he will actually wind up killing off this other group of Marines. Um, but if, if he's not expanding behind this, then there's no real point to this, because he'll just lose the long game. So he's expanding, uh, and, and thus that becomes the next phase of the game. It's can Miso get an expansion up and hold it, uh, and still keep mine from getting out of the map. And can he do anything to hold off the irradiate pressure that eventually comes, which is unlikely, really, really good scourge bomb? Yeah, no, I don't think he's actually built a scourge in a, the whole game, even, so... He's actually a little bit further behind in this tech, but he's still going back for this gas. But the uh, turret doing a little bit better now. Look how quickly turrets die from mutilus. It's kind of insane. Yeah, it's nine plus one mutas, man. That is not a uh, not anything to watch out for. But this irradiates the big story. Uh, that was wow, actually a really good split. split. But the second irradiates is actually dealing a lot more damage, so oh, that's going to do it. GG Miso taps out. Mine takes the three one victory for White over Soul which may be enough to kick them into the uh, the next round. It was, because it was between Soul and White at the end, and they had one win. Uh, they were both on four match wins, one loss, and now one of them is on 5-1, and one is on 4-2. So that's going to be our second Group B playoff, um, playoff team. So I'm just going to quickly report that. Let's go into the results screen, and then we can sort of close off for the evening. And these two can probably get some sleep, so that's pretty good. So let's quickly report that. Make sure that's all up to date. Let's quickly hit the results button. And let's head on over to the overlay, so let's quickly take a look. And let's turn it off. There, there we, we go. go. So as you can see, 3 1 in white versus soul. This is. When I first did the group draw, I really wanted to make sure Soul vs. White was going to be cool, and then it turned out it was going to be their last game for both of them, so that mm -hmm. ended up really nice. So, you know what, that was a pretty cool series, like, what other foreign tournament can say they've had Best, Mind, Scan, and Miso facing off, as well as Shiny as well, that's, I think this is probably the first, so that's And, and cool. I, I think if you uh, looked at the, the players playing against each other before, you Probably could have predicted uh, this outcome. Uh, you know, Scan might have been able to take a, a win against Best. That would have been his uh, best opportunity. But uh, also maybe Geiko and Dandy would have been a little bit of a toss-up. But I, I really do think it's cool to watch Mine versus Miso there at the end. Uh, Miso going for his trademark kind of uh, early aggression. Well, I guess he's got a few trademarks. But I kind of wish he went for the more economic because he is really good at that one as well. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see him pull that one off, but I guess he was confident with that against me. Yeah, I mean, overall, that was a pretty sick series. I'm certainly probably going to steal Mine's build from that game because that was pretty cool. And you know what? That's going to end the SCPL for today, but let's actually quickly take a look at the results table or the um, thing table. As you can see, top two teams for... Uh, group B are going to be IRK and White Clan with five wins, one loss overall. And in Group A, you have Net Wars with five wins, one loss as well. And joining them in the playoffs is going to be, yeah, I think it's actually going to be Naz. Sorry, I think it's going to be DM because they did go four zero this season, uh, this this game, but. It's almost like I'm missing a game from here somehow. Either way, I'll figure that out. I'll post all the four results afterwards. Uh, probably not today, probably tomorrow evening or something. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Let's just quickly sign off uh, from here, obviously. They're both in my room as well. So it's been pretty fun. It's been a cool cast. 
and hopefully they've enjoyed it as well. I know they're both incredibly tired, so any words to anybody? It's super fun uh, being in jail. It's way more fun than I would have expected that. But uh, yeah, we did bake the knife into the cake, so we busting you out in the morning. It's been pretty cool to be uh, here. Um, you know, as, as as great as casting Brood War is offline, it's always uh, a lot more fun to to do it with uh, great friends. And by that, I mean Twitch chat. I don't know about you guys, but uh, but yeah, thanks to everybody for coming out and supporting STPL. It's a pretty cool initiative. So big thanks to Kicks for putting it on and for uh, allowing us to come be a part of. All this greatness that we experienced here tonight. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you for having us. It's it's fine, and uh, you're not going anywhere yet because you're both staying here. So oh god, there's there's nowhere to go. You're stuck in weave it's jail. It's like that or Hotel California there. line. We can get out, but we can never leave. You, you can't. You're stuck here forever. That's it. I'm just gonna lock you in, and you're never leaving. You're just gonna have to cast this TPL forever. <laughs> but where can people see you casting next? Any hints? Or? Uh, I mean, just probably the best uh option is following me on Twitter. Uh, at rapid casting, or I guess you can also follow Kix at Kix SD. Uh, yep, that's correct. And then Cadenti. Uh, don't bother following me. I'm <laughs> secret streams only, so <laughs> no one will find you. Yeah, you'll never know. But Cadenti streams a lot. She's probably one of the most active Zerg foreign streamers, I would say, outside of Beyond Zerg. Although, so. Maybe not recently because you've been a little bit busy. But yeah, you've been carrying rapid around everywhere. So, you know what? Uh, it's been pretty fun. Thanks all for tuning into the SCVL. Thanks for the donations we got. It does mean a lot. Uh, the prize pool, I think, is still around $914. So, that's going to be pretty crazy when we get to the end of the year. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported everything. And I will see you guys next time. Not sure about. I know Rapid probably won't because he'll be back in Korea. And he is going to be like. 4 a.m. or something, isn't it, usually, when I start? It's, it's yeah, it's uh, going to be a struggle. AM. Oh, and thank you for the cheer as well, as someone just said. And, uh, yeah, guys, tune in to the Bombastic Star League tomorrow and Sunday. That's going to be casted by Zero. I'm not sure if he's going to cast it with Eon Zerg or not. I have no idea. Uh, uh, Shamtu is currently dodging volcanoes in Hawaii, so he is not going to be casting Havati this weekend. And you know what? Thanks for tuning in once again, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good evening. I know you're strong. And see ya.